this is Bill Kovacs from the Don Twain Free Press, and today I'm likely to piss off a bunch of Star Wars geeks. I'm reviewing The Clone Wars, the computer animated series. Disney announced that it was going to release season 7 on Disney+, Plus, so I decided I wanted to go back and look at the first six seasons over again. Now, I hadn't watched all six seasons in their original run. I stopped watching around the first season because, well, the series sucks. I think Star Wars Rebels was a far better cartoon. It had much better writing. And, you know, when I was watching Star Wars Rebels, every once in a while, they would refer back to a plot line that was developed in the Clone Wars. So I would go back and watch. And, you know, I have to give it credit. There were some plot lines that were good, like uh, the Mandalore plot line, the plot line that involved Darth Maul. But in general, the show was just really inconsistent. And that's what I confirmed when I went back to watch it again. So... Here's my review of the first season of The Clone Wars, starting with episode one in an episode called Ambush. Now, the whole plot line revolves around the idea that the Toydarians' loyalty uh, to either the Separatists or the, the Jedi is going to depend on some silly contest between uh, the Separatist forces and Yoda. Now, this is just ridiculous. Uh, why it is the Toydarian king can justify leaving his loyalty up to whether or not Yoda can overcome certain obstacles put in his way by the uh, the droid army to, to show up at the negotiations at a certain time is just beyond me. It's such a random reason to pick what side you're going to be on in a war that it would border on incompetence. And yet... This was the way that they chose to introduce this series to the rest of the world. This episode was so bad that it was one of the main reasons why I stopped watching the series in the first run. And during the first season, there were plenty of episodes where the writing just didn't get much better. Uh, take, for example, episode 14, Defenders of the Peace. This episode revolves around a pacifist species called the Lurmen. Now, the Lurmen are neutral in the conflict, and they don't want to get involved in the war between the Separatists and the Republic. And the point of the show is essentially to argue that there are some times when you need to stand up and you need to fight. But this is a theme that is repeated over and over again in the series. There's not really an attempt to show how pacifism can be a, a noble goal, like when Gandhi was employing a strategy of nonviolence. No, no, this is just a battle between good and evil, and you better pick a side. And to emphasize how ridiculous and silly the writing is, we get not one, but two episodes where everyone's favorite character, and believe me, I'm mustering as much sarcasm I can, uh, where everyone's favorite character, Jar Jar, shows that he's not just some stupid character that everyone hates, but he actually saves the day. Now, I think I'm talking for most Star Wars fans when I say Jar Jar is the worst character that George Lucas ever created, and most of us would just be happy if he went away. Now, let's talk about the bad guys in this series, because... There's so much potential, so much they could do in particular with the General Grievous character. But instead, they characterize General Grievous as being incompetent, self-interested, uh, a coward in many instances. And in particular, when you compare him with the way that Gendy Tarkovsky characterized him as a, a real challenge who can take on many Jedis at the same time, and yet in this series, he's easily defeated by the Jedi over and over again. And likewise, with Count Dooku, he's a former Jedi, he's a Sith Lord now, and he's supposed to be a, a formidable character, and instead we see him, like, in the episode where he meets Hondo, and he just gives up to the space pirates. He doesn't use his force training, he doesn't use his dark side abilities, he just gives up. And with the way that the Separatist leaders just seem so willing to turn on each other and to stab each other in the back, it's hard to see how the droid army is uh, so successful in defeating the Jedi over and over again. So let's turn to the characterization of Anakin Skywalker. He's supposed to be the chosen one, yet we see him injured seriously. We see him captured very easily. It's hard to see how he has this reputation of being such a powerful Jedi as he gets himself into trouble and he gets hurt so often. 
And this raises another question, this time about the Jedi Order. Now, the Jedi are supposed to be a compassionate order, but we see them so often so willing to abandon their compatriots just to move on as they leave other Jedi behind. And, you know, this is a question that even Ahsoka raises, and I don't think that the series really gives us a satisfactory answer to that. So you may say, hey, this is just a cartoon. It's a kid's show. You're not being fair in your criticism of it. And to that, I first say, take a look at the violence in this series, because it's not the cartoony violence, the stuff that you would expect from, like, Tom and Jerry. This is really some serious violence here. For example, we see General Grievous stab a junk dealer straight in the heart right on camera. We also see Grievous grab Ahsoka by the throat and threaten her with his lightsaber. In the season finale, we see bounty hunter Cad Bane grab a member of the Senate Defense Forces and snap his neck easily. This is not the kind of violence that kids should be watching unsupervised. So now let's talk about the show's overt sexuality because it's obvious that it's one of its target audience is uh, hormone-driven adolescent boys. You can see that by the way they depict female characters. Uh, take, for instance, Ahsoka Tano. Uh, she's basically wearing a bikini. She's got this tube top uh, where she's showing off her midriff, and that's how she fights her battles, not in some kind of armor or protective gear. And this is true with other female characters, where their costumes just accentuates their hips or their breasts. Take Jedi Master Ayla Sakura, for example. She's just this sex bot who talks in a French accent, has this outfit that exposes her midriff, shows us her belly button, accentuates her hips, accentuates her cleavage. I mean, it's just not an outfit that's appropriate to fight a war with. So I can't agree that this is just a kid's show. To be fair, there are a couple of good episodes in this season. In particular, towards the end of the season, we get a, a well-written story arc about the liberation of the planet Ryloth and the Twi'lek people. I like the introduction of General Syndulla, who, of course, is the father of one of the major characters in the Rebel series, and his conflict with Senator Ta, uh, who are political rivals who have to learn to work together. The season ends on a really good note, as we are introduced to a worthy set of opponents for the Jedi Order, and that is Cad Bane and his band of bounty hunters, including fan favorite Aura Singh. Bane is characterized as a formidable adversary, not easily defeated by the Jedi Order. This episode gave me hope that perhaps the first season, the writers just needed to get their wheels spinning, and that we would see improvement when we get into Season 2. So there are rare gems, but this only highlights the issue that drove me crazy in the first place, and that is its inconsistency. Yes, there are a few well-written episodes and some well-developed story arcs that are worthy of being Star Wars canon, but you need to wade through a lot of garbage to get to those episodes. I fear that getting to Season 7 may prove to be pure torture, as I'm already finding myself groaning and rolling my eyes as I slog through season one. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to our channel. Please leave a comment below if you've got ideas for other topics that we could address. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified when we release other videos in the future, and don't forget to hit the like button.